There's a world-renowned topiary garden in the tiny town of Bishopville, South Carolina, and that garden was created by this man, a man named Pearl. I'm Pearl Fry, and this is my garden. Pearl started the garden in 1981 with the goal of winning Yard of the Month from the local garden club. I went to a neighborhood to buy a house, and the reason they didn't want to sell me a house, they said I wouldn't keep up the yard. There was a stereotype at the time that African Americans didn't keep up their yards. So I figured if I did win Yard of the Month, and the person that made that statement could understand you can't judge people by one person. Once I got Yard of the Month, people couldn't believe it. Pearl now has over 300 plants, most of which were throwaways that came from the recycling bin at a local nursery. I don't water, I don't spray, I don't fertilize. I use no chemicals. It's all natural. It's all pretty well done organically. Some of my tallest plant that was recycled is around 30 feet. So many people drove by Pearl's house to see his garden that he opened it up to the public. Hey, that looks like a sheep. A big sheep. I would say about 10,000 people visit my garden every year. What else do you want to look at on the map? People come from all over the world to see it. I've had people from Australia, Japan, Korea. I wanted to share it because so many people came out and wanted to see it. Very seldom see something start out so simple and make an impact that this garden has made. The garden is about love. And the last thing you see before you leave my garden is love, peace, and goodwill. Trope of Belladonna will kill you. Datura will put you to sleep forever. Aconitum will kill you. Laurel will produce cyanide and kill you. Every plant here in the poison garden is poisonous and has the ability to kill you. My name's Trevor Jones and I'm the head gardener of Anik Garden. This plant is giant hogweed. It will get up to around about eight foot high. It's phototoxic, so it will burn your skin and give you blisters for up to seven years. This garden is set in the wall garden of the old castle in Northumberland, UK. We'd have around about 95 plants and we're adding to the collection all the time. This plant is Aconitum or monkshood wonderful blue flowers, but the whole of the plant is poisonous. The berries, crushed up and fed to you, will kill you. The leaves themselves will kill you also, as will the root and the stem. We have to obviously maintain the garden, so we have to tend the plants. And when we do that, we have to be very careful of the way we operate. So we have to cover some of our skin when we deal with particularly dangerous plants. This plant is laurel. It produces cyanide, and we all know what that'll do to you. So it was the brainchild of the Duchess, the Duchess of Northumberland. So rather than having a herb garden, she decided to create more interest and have a poison garden. They're very, very common plants. In fact, a lot of them are what we call cottage garden plants, and they're grown in many people's gardens, but people don't know how harmful they actually are. This is a trope of belladonna. Four berries are enough to kill a child. People are intrigued by poisonous plants and often very worried when they come out because many of them will be growing these plants at home they don't realise the powerful impact plants can have on us as humans. Is it something that you find fascinating? Definitely. Why? Uh, it's a good way to get rid of your wife. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I don't know. <laughs> plants are the foundation for all life. Understanding plant diversity is critical to our continued survival. The 
goal of the World Flora Online is to accumulate in one place on a website a description and illustrations of every known plant species. We are about five years into the process. We are accumulating new specimens, we're digitizing them, and all of that information feeds in ultimately to the World Flora Online. The main way that our specimens come to us is that they are collected in the field. When they're here, they are mounted onto stiff paper. The information about the plant is transcribed onto a little label that goes along with the specimen. A good mounter can do about 50 specimens per day. Once the specimens are mounted, we photograph them. Then that information goes online pretty much immediately. The project began in 2010 and it is meant to be completed by 2020. We photographed about 2.6 million of our specimens. Worldwide, it must be on the order of 10 or 15 million. Plants are endlessly fascinating and we have to know what they are and how they differ from one another in order to understand what kind of measures need to be taken to protect them. This is the story of a plant, but not just any plant. It is the story of a plant that long, long ago once ruled the world. A plant that today it's the very last of its kind. It's this plant behind me, Encephalatus woodii, E. woodii for short, and I've been looking after it for over 20 years. It was named for British botanist John Medley Wood, who in 1895 discovered it growing on a hillside on the coast of South Africa. A strange handsome plant Ooh. caught his eye and he carefully removed a small portion of it and had it shipped all the way to London. To here, Kew Gardens, where it's been for the last 117 years. But its history goes much, much further back. You see, Encephalatus woodii is what is known as a cycad and cycads have been around for 300 million years. As the millennium rolled on, cycads flourished providing shade for triceratops, a perch for pterodactyls and a tasty snack for brontosauruses. At one point during the Jurassic, cycads made up 20% of all the plants on earth and covered every corner of the globe. But the good times couldn't last forever. The dinosaurs went extinct. Ice ages came and went. New modern plants like conifers and fruit trees started pushing cycads out. And the once proud population of E. woody eyes were reduced and reduced and reduced until there was possibly only one left, one single solitary E. woody eye growing quietly on a hillside. Which brings us right back to John Medley Wood. At the time, he had no way of knowing just how rare his discovery was. But expedition after expedition in search of more E. woodii have proved fruitless. You see, cycads are dioecious, meaning you need separate male and female plants to create a new one. And this one happens to be a male, a true lonely bachelor. If a female mate cannot be found, it really will be the last of its kind. To this day, researchers are still looking. After all, it's a big world and might just be a chance. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, he'll have me to keep him company. Covering a half acre with hanging flowers, the oldest known wisteria in Japan is the centerpiece of this brilliantly pastel-colored flower park. Located in Tochiki, Japan, just over an hour train ride from Tokyo, is Ashikaga Flower Park. The park spans 23 acres and is home to more than 350 wisterias and other flowers. The colors vary depending on the flowering season from pinks and purples to yellows and whites. 
Some features of the park include the Wisteria Tunnel and Floating Gardens, but the pride and joy of Ashikaga Flower Park is the Great Miracle Wisteria. The 140-year-old sprawling tree is located in a place of pride, right in the center of the park. After nightfall, the site is lit up so these draping flowers can be seen at all hours. The vivid yellow wisteria begins blooming at the start of May and is the only one of its kind in Japan. The park is a year-round attraction with seasonal plants that creates an ever-changing sense of magnificence as nature puts on a show. Located in a waterfront park known as Gardens by the Bay is Super Tree Grove. This mechanical forest is a utopia for nature in a very urban location. Super Tree Grove was commissioned by the Singapore government with the intention of raising the quality of life for its residents by enhancing greenery and flora in the city. This man-made mechanical forest consists of 18 super trees. The trees range between 80 to 160 feet high and are connected by a walkway which allows visitors to cross between them and view the city from the treetops. With their thick trunks and network of thin, neuron-like branches, each tree acts as a vertical garden. Over 160,000 varieties of orchids, ferns, and other climbing plants have been planted in the trees. The trees also generate solar power. 11 of the trees are fitted with solar photovoltaic systems that convert sunlight into energy. This provides lighting that allows the trees to come alive at night, making this an all-day, all-season, horticultural heaven. <laughs>